Hello and welcome to another episode of Energy and Star Sign Readings with myself, Thomas Janak. We're looking at the week of September the 28th to Sunday the 4th of October 2020. Alexa, what star signs are in September? Alexa, thank you. Of course. So, obviously, we are in Libra, and that's the first star sign we will be looking at, but not before we look at the overall energy for the week ahead. Let me just say this again. The week we're looking at is September the 28th to October the 4th, 2020. Here we go. Let's have a look what the overall energy has got for all of us. Oh, and we're getting three guides or three um, cards, whatever you want to call it, to come through for us. So let's have a look what is going on. Okay, this is symbolism. So that means it is an overall energy, the energy that is um, for all of us to look at. And then we get a bit more clarity, hopefully, or normally we will, uh, in the um, respective star signs. This is what we have this week. We have wonder, family and sadness. Okay, this is the week for all of us to reflect on our lives up to that point, especially all our relations, um, the way family events have shaped us. And I can guarantee you one thing, you know, you have heard that saying, you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. <laughs> yes. Um, this is not a week to be super judgmental or um, negative if that makes sense, because that's not what this energy is about. This is about saying, this has happened within my family, my flesh and blood family. And now, because we have wonder, family and sadness, this is the week where anything and everything to do with hmm, older, it might not be older, but trauma, family-related trauma, is about to come to the fore so it can be released. So what that means is, and we will probably get more as we go down the star signs, if there are family gatherings this week, or, you know, even if you have a WhatsApp group <laughs> where you talk to your family, if there's any sadness inside you, <clears throat> what I'm feeling is that this is not necessarily the week to ask for forgiveness or to force someone or ask them to acknowledge their wrongdoing. This is not that weak. What I'm getting is, is just to realize this has happened. If there's anything that isn't right, by all means, state it. But first and foremost, allow it to just trigger it out. You don't need anyone or from your family to approve or disapprove or apologize or go over stuff that has already happened. That's not what the guides are talking about. All they're saying is there is low energy trauma that can hold all of us back. It has to do with family members and events in the family. And this is just a week to say like, okay, and I get that out of my system. Okie dokie, that was that. And now we're looking at the first star sign of the week, which is Libra. Let's have a look at Libra. Libra, you have the elk and the screech owl. So remember the overall energy and for the first star sign, Libra. What they're saying to you is, do not get upset about anything this week. 
you have the elk, which means you have an animal with antlers, which means you're quite protected. Okay, so trust that, that you can state your, um, your emotions, you can get all your points across, right? And, but you have to be within the center of your calmness, if that makes sense. Because you have the screech owl, right? Which means you already know how to approach and how not to approach situations. And sometimes we get carried away because obviously they're emotionally charged, right? This is not just about family. Remember, this is the overall energy is, has to do with family, but within the star sign, we're not just dealing with family. So that's your energy, your hmm, advice, for want of a better word, for this week. Um, yeah, that's all I really, really say to you, right? Stay in the center of your calmness. And therefore, if you um, encounter people who are by default um, aggressive, leave them be, right? You do not have to answer to low energy. Okie dokie, that was Libra going into Scorpio, our second star sign for the week. And I say that every week, we have oftentimes overlapping energy and it's just what happens this week as well. You have the moose and the gray fox. So just like the, the deer, the moose is obviously an animal that is very similar. It's not the same, but it's very similar. So it's another animal with antlers that you can see here. And so again, Scorpio, you also are protected. What the advice for you is, because you have the gray fox as well, is to realize that you are an old soul. And that means remember what you are capable of. Remember and honor what you have achieved in life. So that when anyone says to you, oh, you haven't done anything, you can't do anything right. And I always say, being from Frankfurt, fuck them. <laughs> and I don't mean this in a bad way, but you do not have to allow anyone to lower your energy just because their opinion of you is low. Remember, oftentimes, well, I find virtually all the time, when people really judge, um, they normally judge on things that they don't like about themselves, if that makes sense. You will notice if someone is really too happy about their life goes, um, they will tell you what's wrong with yours. Right? If that makes sense. That doesn't mean that that constructive criticism isn't a good thing or is welcome. But what the guides are saying to you is this is about the people who are not constructive, who are just saying something, literally, to see if they can. Um, and they don't. They don't necessarily. They're not necessarily bad people, but their responses to anything that is happening to you. Um, are designed to make you feel small and you're better than that. Okie dokie, that was Scorpio going into Sagittarius. So Sagittarians, let's have a look what we got for you. Okay, <laughs> for Sagittarians, the overall energy was about family and the guides are just confirming because you have birds and totem that your thoughts this week ought to be about family and what has actually happened that shaped your reality and, more importantly, what maybe even holds you back. So what I'm getting, for instance, is, um, and this is, might not be for all Sagittarians, but this is what I'm getting as an emotion. You carry guilt around, even if you feel that this guilt is... Um, is rightly there, it doesn't do you any good. Guilt doesn't do anything. All it does, it keeps you in the state of, I'm a failure. I didn't do this right. I didn't see it. All these kind of things. So what the guides are saying is, don't go there because you have the birds and the totem. So what they're saying is, look at a vantage point, right? Remove yourself from your relations. And look at where you are in your life 
and live in the now. So they're not asking you to abandon anyone. All they're asking you is to have a look internally and see what is there that every time I think about family causes me grief, causes me to stop growing. And that's what you need to look at. This is really because we have the overall energy of, the, of looking at family relations. Um, so what I'm getting is emotionally for all of us, therefore, even though we're now with Sagittarians, this really is about letting go again, which is, is oftentimes the case, uh, about letting go, but also realizing it is in the letting go that you then make space for newer things. Okay? All right, Sagittarians. Going into Capricorns. There we go. Capricorn. <laughs> Capricorns, you're quite lucky, um, if I may say so, energetically, because you have the frog and the eagle. So this is just a way for you to realize, right? Whatever is happening this week, you will not fail. There's nothing that life can throw at you that you would fail at, right? So you have the frog, which means is an amphibian, can live on land on water, which means no matter what life brings, you will manage. And you have the eagle, which means new opportunities are actually already in the process of coming to you. And um, you just need to say like, yeah, um, I, I acknowledge them and I, I'm looking forward to new um, opportunities for want of a better word, for Capricorns, your week is all go, right? And at the same time, always remember the overall energy. This is not the week to just pressure on and do all these things without reflecting on the things that did not really work with regards to um, you and your family, okay? Capricorns going into Aquarius, go on to a different deck. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I say wow is because we're with, we're with Aquarius now and we have the spirit of family right here. So there's another star sign that is reminded that the overall energy that is um, basically the energy that the whole week is carrying on its own will be Aquarius, will be your energy to look at and to work through for the entire week, right? You have the spirit of family and you have the dancer of life, which means it is time to not be or no longer be affected by anything that may have happened in the past. What I'm getting strongly, and again, this is just how the guides work, um, I do honestly believe that the people who need to listen or need to hear the messages will find this video. This has always been you know, my, uh, my experience with um, the feedback that I'm getting from people. And what the dancer of life means is to say like, okay, this is time to realize that no matter what happened, it's all in the past. And the dancer of life means I'm looking into my life. I'm looking into making what I feel needs to work to making that work, to make that work. Right? So this is actually a week where, yes, you look at family, you also reflect, this is really important, to look at, at um, what happened. And my feeling is, for Aquarius, that a lot of stuff will come to the fore. This might not be a great week. Um, energetically, my normal advice, therefore, would be, or is, um, to make sure to keep any interaction with difficult family members, <laughs> and you know who they are, to keep them to, to a, a minimum, right? And focus on your life, all right? That was Aquarius going into Pisces. My star sign. Let's have a look at us Pisceans. <laughs> we have the hunter of strengths and the hunter of mysteries. That's actually not a bad thing. The hunter of strengths means is that we're in the process of getting stronger. We also feel we want to get stronger. So if you started um, 
something new where you feel like that makes me feel good and it feels like a new beginning that's exactly what you are supposed to be doing when i say supposed to be doing because you have free will you decide when you spring back into action and when it is just all too much if that makes sense and so we have the hunter of strength which means yes there are the limits um, energetically to what um, pisces can achieve but my feeling is because we have the hunter of strengths as pisceans um, look for things where it's like yeah i always wanted to do this um, and I'm going to keep going. I, I, um, I tell you about my life, you know, not the best thing to do, but, I'm, you know, but I make it personal because we, we're in Pisces. Just recently, I um, decided to go to a mixed martial art thingy, Bob, that is just five minutes from me. And, um, and uh, I noticed um, I'm, I'm really unfit. <laughs> and it will take me quite a while, um, not just to learn all that stuff, but to um, sustain myself during it point is we all have to start somewhere so i'm not making this about my age i'm not making this about my past all i'm saying is i have to hunt of strengths so as i go through it logically speaking by sticking with it right i should or i will automatically get fitter because that's what i'm going there for and the reason i make this about me is because sometimes when you are Talking about your personal stuff, people can relate better. And so because I'm going through this and I believe that, you know, my whole life is basically um, guided by my guides, hence, hence the word. Um, it is good because it means what, I'm, what I have decided to do is working. And it is a reflection of, yeah, I started this. So what the guides are saying for you this week, start something. If you are a person that says, like, I always wanted to do this and I, you know, never quite got around to it, make time and get through it because you have the hunter of mysteries, which means when you have a new hmm, set of goals, almost, when you have a new outlook on life, and even if you just do things because they take you away from other things that you need to still heal from, um, you have the hunter of mysteries, which means just keep going. It will open new doors. Right, so that was all. That was us, Pisces, <laughs> going into Aries. Nice one. <laughs> okay, Aries. This is not a week to have hmm, annoying conversations, even if a good conversation could be um, clearing the air. If that makes sense, and you know, and and undo some of the stale energy, this is not a good week because you have the horse and animal deities. So what that what they're saying is you're fully protected this week. I mean, fully protected by your guides. But what you need this way, it's quite short actually um, for 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 Aries. What you need this week is space, right? So um, if you have the ability to not engage much and just look after yourself um, <laughs> my guys are showing me all sorts of teas i have the feeling they're still showing this because i i would do well just drinking some teas i only just started coming back to her herbal teas but that's what they show me it's, it's, to, it's for you to nurture yourself um, and spend time with yourself and um, if there's anything you dislike about yourself this is the week to re-fall in love with yourself. Not a bad idea for Aries. Okie dokie. Going into Taurus. <laughs> okay. Taurus. Quite a lot of um, messages here for Taurus. What they're saying is, and this is interesting, you have happiness, laziness, and affection. So, in other words, when things are good for Tauruses, your energy is perfect. The moment you you take things for granted, the moment you say like, "Yeah, everything is good," right? What the guides are saying is, don't let up. Don't go into like, "Okay, there was a really good day," 
Um, so now I have two pieces of cake. <laughs> this is not so much about the cake. What, what, what it really is about is to say things are on the up. Things are working. You know, you're working towards your happiness. You're achieving something. You're doing something where you actually say like, wow, I'm really proud of it. And all they're saying is once you have done a few things that make you proud, you slow down. That's Taurus for you this week. And all they're saying is don't go there because you have affection. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, you have affection. So what that means is if you look at what you can achieve, you will learn to realize that it is you that creates this. And therefore you learn that your oftentimes low self-esteem can be challenged to be overcome and transformed into knowing and realizing, yeah, I, I'm good. I can do a lot of things. So that's, that's how this works with Taurus this week. Going into Gemini. Gemini. Your week is going to be slow-ish. You have the journey and the dancer of friendship, which means you're on a journey. You just keep going, but you pace yourself right. Right? Remember the overall energy was to look into um, family matters, unresolved family matters, and if there's any pain that still sits there, to let that go. But because you have the journey, there's nothing um, that you need to do that is urgent. There's also nothing that you need to do that is, that is um, uh, with friction. All they're saying is, Keep going on your journey, keep going on your path, focus on yourself this week because you have the dancer of friendship, which means if you focus on yourself, how do I feel when I don't concern myself with too many things at once? The dancer of friendship is saying your energy goes higher when you take yourself more seriously and, um, and put yourself number one. That makes sense, right? Um, and the dancer of friendship means that you every time, uh, well, whatever you do, you meet people on your energy and you attract them on your energy. And so the message is for you to realize as your energy goes higher, just by pacing yourself right, you manifest new beginnings, new friendships, and maybe even new relationships that fulfill you in a way that you feel you haven't been fulfilled. At the same time, because you have the journey here, <clears throat> it's always important to realize that you're not supposed to be completed, right? You complete yourself and anyone that comes in is just a bonus, right? If that makes sense, okay? So that's all we got for Gemini. Going into Cancerians. Okay. Cancer. You have the polar bear and the scar up. <coughs> Excuse me. You're quite, without probably knowing it, that's what I'm getting. It's like, it's, I have the feeling sort of uh, cancer, they, you know, you kind of go, um, you just keep going, right? And you work toward things and it feels like it's a bit, a lot going on, if that makes sense. For, for cancer, a lot of stuff um, to take in and yet you have the polar bear. And what that, what that means is you're quite vulnerable. You are still healing you are still battling with things that had to do with past, um, both recent and, and long term. And obviously, you also have to deal with things that have happened to you and your family. What I'm getting is um, rejection, because you have the scarab. The scarab is, the scarab is about regeneration. Because it can lie dormant for years before it comes back into life. So what they're saying is, if you have memories, especially of family members or, or, or relationships, where you felt um, unappreciated, for want of a better word, that's what you're healing from, right? That doesn't mean you have to prove anything. You don't have to rush anything, you don't have to prove anything, but you need to realize this week slowly does it right and that's all we have for cancerians going into leo our second last star sign 
for the week. So we have Leo and Virgo. Um, let's keep going with Leo. <laughs> okay. Mm, I said that before, my guides can be strange. And in my head, I have that song, There's only one way to soothe my soul. Only one way, only one way. From Depeche Mode, by Depeche Mode. And so, <laughs> for um, Leo, what I'm getting is, when it says there's only one way to soothe my soul, there's never only one way. It just means that you need to focus on your happiness this week. And you have the bobcat and the black bear. So, the bobcat is the animal that says, um, in order for you to reflect on your life, look at the vantage point. Don't go into... Okay, this is what I'm getting. This may sound a bit weird, or maybe not. Um, <coughs> what they're showing me is it's just a, a, um, a person that I've never seen before, if that makes sense, looking through old pictures. You know, these old-fashioned picture books that we used to have before the whole digital shebang took over. It's actually quite nice. So this, what they're showing me is, is Leo's looking at old pictures, reflecting through visuals from back in the day. And all the guides are saying is, if you do that, that doesn't mean you have to look at, at pictures, it just means like, like uh, memories will come up for you. Detach yourself. Just go like, oh yeah, I remember it because I was there. But it is not supposed to affect me. So, you know, you see me doing this, I have restless legs and I have a little bit of a cramp. <laughs> so I'm going, ah, right? It's nothing wrong with me, nothing wrong with the video. It's just, you know, you know, I'm just not meant, uh, made for sitting, that's all it is. So look at a vantage point, relax around your memories, right? And then you have the black bear, which means these memories are coming up for Leos to realize, and this is what I'm getting strongly for, for Leos. Like I said, if you are Leo and you found this video, then clearly this message is for you. Because what I'm getting is that you are, uh, past at times has held you back has kept you in a space where growing is difficult and all the guides are saying is this is a week to say like yeah okay i am vulnerable and i am still dealing with things that aren't working and now is the time to dream big if you wanted to do something extravagant manifest it this week and ask the guys uh, the guides to help right okay so that was um leo going into the last star sign um for this week which is virgo so virgos we have the wolverine and the golden eagle so for virgos remember the oval energy that comes in here again the oval energy was about looking at things that happened within your family over the years and things that have affected you um, and are maybe even still affecting you. And the Wolverine is saying you're still making progress with letting stuff go and working through things that happened in your family line, if that makes sense, bloodline. Um, and all they're saying is that's perfectly fine, there's no rush. But remember, don't be defined by um, what happens in the past. You don't live there anymore, right? And you have the golden eagle, which means by realizing, okay, some of these memories are painful. Some of these events that I had to go through or that I went through have taken a toll on me. The golden eagle is saying, yeah, you still see your food from a mile away, which means new beginnings are happening. So this is, for, for Virgos, a way of realizing that it is time to literally detach. Um, it doesn't mean you have to abandon people, but you detach yourself this week and say, like, no, I'm focusing on myself and I'm focusing on that way, which is the future, and I'm focusing on that which is the now, right? And um, don't allow yourself to be held back by other people's opinion um, because you're better than that. 
right? So that's all we have time for. Um, okay, let's see if this works. Alexa, say goodbye. Bye-bye.